Okay, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and main. Yep, go right up here. We're going to be in menu. I'm going to go to my browser. And I got a hard drive on here. USB hard drive. I'm looking for a sample I want to pull off of here. This one right here. I'll push the data wheel in. And now I want to go to sample edit. So go back to menu and sample edit. Okay, gotta find a sample now. Okay, so let's go find the samples. Press right here. There it is right there. This is my sample. Top 10 drums. Okay, got a sample here. And uh, we're gonna do some sample editing. Before we do, I wanna hear this back actually. Let's go back to here. So we can hear the sample. It's pretty long too, actually. Um, we're gonna do this first. So right here, where that keyboard is at, I can actually name the sample, right? So I can add a new name here, which I'm not gonna do. Let's press do it to get out of that one. And then here, we have the garbage can where I can actually erase the sample. No need to do that. And then here, of course, we have, see the headphones there? We can hear back the sample. Now here, there's a magnifying glass so I can actually, use my two fingers so I can zoom in. I can get really close on the waveform, which is awesome. Oops, saving progress. So this is a problem too, when saving progress too quickly all the time. So it's trying to save what's going on here and checking it out. So this is one thing I don't do is uh, do too much saving. And for this video, this is why I did this, so you can see what's going on. When you actually add the saving parameter in, it will stop and save what you're doing and what you're doing, what's in progress. Which is kind of cool, particularly once I take a sample. So I've taken a sample, and now it says, okay, I gotta save this stuff. The time period has ended, and we're saving it. So I'm gonna turn the save off once the sample's saved. I'll go back to menu. And then I want to go back to uh, preferences, right? And so we want to go, let's see, project defaults. Uh, nope, we're going to go to um, save and load. Nope, this is enable save and load timeout. Here it is, timeout. It's right there. Save and load. So, five minutes? No. I want to enable it. That's it for that. I'm not doing it anymore. So, I'll go back to here, and there will be no more saving. I'll go back to sample edit. And here's our sample edit page. So always save your samples what you load them in. That's important. Keep the stuff saved and save your project, you know, as you go along. Now what I can also do, here I am, I go back to menu, I go to preferences, I go to save and load. I can only set this a little longer than five minutes. Ten minutes is actually is good too. But I'm not using it right now for the purpose of this video so it won't stop the camera. Of course, I can use my fingers to squeeze back. I can pinch it too a little bit like this, like on an angle like that. Zoop, pinch it in and out. It's kind, of, look, it's kind of cool. I like it a lot. So I can come here. Settings now. This is settings. So here I can set the Q play mode. So this is toggle. It toggles back and forth. Or I can do one shot. So one shot means you hit it once and you're gone. So I come back to here. I go back to play here. Still runs, right? Like a one shot it from a pad. From pad one. Let's get this sample up a little bit more. That's the whole sample. What I want to do is I want to chop it up. But first thing I want to do actually right here is go back to settings. I got an idea of what that is. I come to here, this is Q preview, which I normally keep off. We have here a slice preview. No need for that, keep that off as well. Now what I want to do though, is I'd like to scroll. Like for example, here, as I see the sample, it just plays across it, right? So I want to go like this. I want to have it play and look at it. So I'm going to come here, 
so I can touch without turning it on and look at this sample somewhat, right? And now when I press play, nothing happens. I go back to my headset and it stops. So I'm going to press it here on my pad and now it's scrolling. As you can see, the waveform is scrolling past the playback head, which is this white line right here. As it passes it, the sample plays. Now that, go back to settings here, that is follow. It also does page. I'll go to page here, I'll press close, and now we'll go back to the top again. And in this case, I'm gonna get real close. I'm gonna go back to magnifying it. That's better. And now I'll press pad number one. So it goes back over the waveform. And you can see every minute part of the waveform to see if you got a problem, if you don't like it. Start there. And that's page view. So what I prefer generally is to scroll across it, to just follow it. Now we have other ways to see the sample in terms of time in terms of timeline units. So for example, I press time here, we'll close this out, and you'll see here at the top it says time. And this is time on top. The black line right there, that's where the time is at. A ruler of time. I can come back to here. I can see samples. I can see beats. Samples. Beats. And we can see the beats here. Now, I prefer to use samples. Follow in samples. Close it out. So I'm going to do here next, I'd like to probably loop it, give you an idea how to loop a sample. So, for example, I'm going to come in here actually and then I'm going to go to, um, let me get back to, let's take, go back to the beginning again, and here's the beginning. So there's a little space in the beginning. I want to see that space. So what I want to do here, in this case, I want to go to end. I want to bring my end all the way down, so, Right about there, right? So that's my end. I only want to hear the first beat. Okay, I want to go to start now. And I want to zoom in. So I want to zoom into this. Zoom in some more. Ah, right, here we go. And now I'm at my start. I'm going to bring my start up here to where I want to get that first bass drum. That's good. First bass drum. So now I would like to go to the end and go to where I believe would be the end of the beat. That's something around here. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's been tuned. I did a thing there. Let's go back up to here to where original picture's at. So I hit this by mistake for tuning. So let's check this tuning out. I can change the tuning of a sample right here. Okay, so watch out if you hit something by mistake, know where to correct it at. So I want to get this bass drum, I want to come to here and tune that up. Actually, get that in the right position, now play it back. Okay, that's going to be my loop. So I want to be able to do that, to be able to get a loop size of a sample, and that's how you do it with stop and start or start and end. So I got to hear the start, and I figured out my end point, and that works. Start, and we also have the loop. So it figures out the distance between here and here, and that's the amount of samples that are in this loop. All slice, which is right here, which is what this whole thing would be, this entire sample is one big slice. Then of course, the tuning I showed you earlier. This is the pitch that the original sample will be natural at. If I put it on the keyboard, C3 will be the natural pitch. If I go up to D or C sharp, it'll be higher. If I go down to B, it'll be slower and lower in pitch. Next is the BPM. This is the BPM the machine has figured out what it's gonna be. So Akai has a warp engine in here that can tell you what the BPM of any sample will be. In this case, it thinks it's going to be 100.01. .01. 
And these are just different loop parameters. For example, I come to here, I press pad number 16, Now I'll stop that. See that? I'll press pad 16 again. Now one more time. So you see what happens, there are options here in this little loop thing here. That's no loop in terms of using this effect. That's a loop one way, this is a loop back and forth, and a loop just in reverse. Okay, next what I want to do is I want to normalize this sample. It's kind of low for me, and you can see it's not reaching their maximum peak levels. So currently I'm in trim here, obviously. Then here we have zoom, where I can uh, zoom in or out. Rather than pinching it, I can zoom right in, right? like this and then we have a sign I can sign a sample to a particular program so here's the program right here it's an A program here it's a, a program so I don't want to use this program actually I'm gonna make a brand new program which I will do later on let's close that out and now what I want to do is I want to go to process I want to use process to process the slice so I want to actually get in here and I would like to normalize the samples. You can see from the diagram right here, I have the ability to normalize the sample, which is what we want to do right now. So I'm going to press do it. You can see that goes from this size to that size. And now it's much bigger. Let's play it back. That's it. I like it. Perfect. But it only does this one size of the sample. So I was only going to do this part. The rest of the sample, as you'll see, has not been normalized. So I'm going to press undo. Okay, so once I did it twice, see what happened? I pressed undo. It shook a little bit there, but you can see that it came back to the normal size. So what I want to do here next, I'm going to come to here. I want to probably zoom in like this a little bit more. And then drag this to the end. Now what I want to do once I get to the end, it's perfect. I'm going to come in, press process, now I want to normalize it, do it, and I can see the entire sample now has been processed. Now the next thing I want to do here is talk about these processing parameters we have here. So here in discard, what happens is I can get rid of this section here. And if I have an end here and an end here, they go in the garbage. Obviously from this little diagram right here. Let's close this out. I'm going to go back into here again. And we're going to get another piece. Actually, let's make it simpler. I'm going to go to the endpoint. Drag my end up to any point I want to drag it to. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. And I'm going to decide to get a different point. There we go. Let's go up to here. Let's bring our start point up. and play it back. Now I'll go to my endpoint. Make a little cheeky any kind of ending here. Okay. Good. Good. Start point again. Here we go. Good. Let me hit a little bit. Okay, good. I hit pad 16. When I try to loop it, it's much easier. And so now this is kind of cool. So, what I want to do here now is go back to process. And here in process now, I'll be able to extract this one sample. I can just, matter of fact, what will happen here is that it will get rid of these. The sample name will remain the same. Let's do that. Look at that. This is what I have here for a sample. This is my entire sample. Let me go to here. Let's pull it back in. I'll use these zoomed here at the bottom and I'll play it back. 
and that's the entire sample range and nothing else is there. So we can cut off the beginning and the end of a sample and have just the precise piece we want. Now, I might not like that. I'm going like, and the artist might say, well, I don't like that. Okay, that's bad. So what I would normally do is go back and undo. Hey, look, no problem, bro. It's back. There it is. We'll pick a new part. This is the beauty of using non-destructive editing. It's always there. So it's really great. Plus, I saved the sample early, as you remember. That's why a little save was in there in a the lesson. So that you know to save this stuff because you hate to take a sample and it's gone. Oh, God. I can tell you stories in the studio. So this is kind of cool. And I like the way that works. So we're going to go to our next process here, which is delete. I can delete the middle part. I can get rid of this part, put that in the garbage. I will take one and two, and it will come to this here. It'll come together. There'll be one whole piece. Let's do that right now. So I'll press do it. And now we have a new sample. Let's play it from the top. That's pretty cool because my sample was so cool like right? the part I took out it made it really perfect for this other part to come in on top of it so it changed the loop in a way which is kind of cool and that's why I'm using this loop drum loop because it's easier for me to teach the lesson and also it's a great way to learn timing with sample chopping so that's kind of cool right there so next I don't like that the artist says I don't like that okay we're gonna put it back in we'll undo that and see, it's right back where it came from again. This is so cool. Now, we're going to go back to process again here. Boom. We can silence. I can take that one section here, the one here with the X here. I can silence it. Okay, get everything out of there. Stop it. It's silent. Let's do that next. I'll come to here and I'll say, do it. Sure, why not? Boom, look at that. This section has nothing in it. If I play it back, nothing's there. Blank. It'll just stop. Okay, let's undo that. You never know when you want to take a section and make a silent section in some sort of loop anywhere. But actually, I do that with vocals. When I want to cut a vocal part out and maybe chop it out, put it someplace else, and turn the pitch up, and then turn the one that was here off. So there are reasons why these are here, not just to play around. Then I can extract a sample. From the diagram here, it's obvious. I can take this sample, make a brand new sample, and this sample will still maintain its same length and everything else. We're just taking it out and making a brand new sample. And the name of that sample appears here. Top 10 drums, 106 BPM, 1. So we'll do that. That's great, but we don't see it, right? So you want to come here to our sample pool and there it is right there in the sample pool by itself. So we have a brand new sample. We have not touched or destroyed the original sample, but we pulled the sample out of that sample, which is kind of cool. Now I'm going to undo that. Now see, I undid that. Notice this sample is still here. Let's scroll back down. Notice this sample is still like this. It's still this way. Now what happens is when you do that, you're going to probably have to erase that sample right here. It'll be in the library, and then you'll be like, wait a minute, I got extra samples here. So if you want to clear your sample pool or save it, you can do that. But be aware of that. When you do do that, you're going to just take up more space in the sample pool. Okay, I'll go back here, and I'm going to try the next process that's available to us. And we have extract here. We did normalize already. You saw that already. That's already been done. We have reverse. Let's reverse it. Do it. I reverse this section here. I'll play it back. That's cool. Press pad 16. Hit it again. I can reverse the sample. I can loop that sample reverse. It's kind of cool. So, but I don't want to do that. So, I'm going to undo it now okay so I can undo it quickly this is really great now the next process we have available is fade in 
Let's just do it. You can see it's obvious. Now, this is kind of cool. I have a linear fade in, so it fades in gradually in, but each time it fades in, or as it fades in, it's doing it gradually at a linear incline, like here, you see it's like linear, so it's gonna be even, evenly tapered. So let's say do it. Now I'm gonna press the pad. Now I use that for mixing. I sure do. I like doing that sometimes. Particularly if you want to send somebody a particular, uh, let's say, a track they have to have in a practice too, it may start out like that. That's kind of cool there. Let's undo that. And we're back to normal. The next process here is going to be, you know it, fade out. Before I do that, I want to go back here to fade in, and we're going to do log. Log is another type of fade in as well. Let's do this, and hit log. So obviously, linear goes from the bottom. This has a just a little bit of fade in. Now, I'll undo that. And now we'll try one more, which is going to be exponential. And we're going to go here and do, do it. Now, this is going to be deep. That's from nothing. So it figures out the distance from the beginning to the end, and it wants to start from zero, where you hear nothing at all, silence. The other one, the first fade in was linear, so it had a point and said, okay, we'll start from a quiet point here and move up. The other one was a little bit further up in log, where it just got an area that was actually just about low, but not really low, low, and then it rose up according to the height of the sample. So it's a really cool way to pick out different ways to fade in or fade out. Because I can undo this, which I'll do right now, and I want to go to process here, and then we're going to go here to fade in. The same thing happens here too as well. I can go here, rather fade out, excuse me, and I'll press this. So you can still hear the ending. Stop that. And next, I want to do uh, go back to process again. I'll do undo first, rather. Then I'm here in process. Let's cancel this out. Make sure undo is proper. We're good. Process again here. We can do log and exponential too as well. Let's cancel this. Let's go to the next process because that's pretty simple. Pitch shift. I can change the pitch of a sample. Sort of like if I want a singer to sing higher, I change the key, right? A different pitch. If I want to get her to sing lower, I want a lower pitch. So, in this case, the same thing happens here. I come to here. Oops, I go to right here, right here. Tap there. I want to make sure you tap, get that red border. Then I know I can use my data wheel. And we're going to go down by three, four so many tones. I'll press do it. And I'll play it back. Okay, now that's kind of cool. Now sometimes I will do this when I want to get that boom bap out of something, when I get that real hip hoppy, hardcore sound. But what I will normally do is do that, and then I will take a copy of the snare drum and make it go along with this. So the snare drum has like the original pitch and it's low pitch, so I can get much more of a tighter boom bap feel. One of my tricks I've used over the years, which has worked many times. So this is really cool to do when you're ready to do it. But it's good to know it's there. I'll press undo. We're back to normal. Let's check that to make sure. Yes, we are back to normal. Okay, so what's the next process we have here? Pitch shift. Oh, we got time stretch. I can stretch the time. So time stretching is I may go low in pitch, but I want to make sure I have the same speed, right? So that means if a singer is singing a different key, we still aren't going to change the tempo. It's going to be the same speed. So. So you want to do, right? So I'm going to take this one here. We'll try this. Let's go to here. Let's see. We're going to make it here. Come to here. And I want to make it faster. Let's go to like a boom, 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 boom. Ooh, that's good. That's good right there. Even better. Let's go high. Let's, let's make it sound ridiculous, actually. There you go. And I'll press do it. And now it's going to process this with time stretching. Notice how long it takes. So it requires the little computer in here to figure out 
every part to process it. And now we'll play it back. I also change the speed too as well. Now we're gonna go back here to process. And you can see here, I can change the speed or just change the tempo, right? I changed actually the speed of the synth. I changed that and brought up a lot. So I did both. I changed the speed and I changed the pitch. It's kind of cool. And we'll press undo. Matter of fact, let's go to cancel here. I'll press undo, and it's undone to make sure it is. And that's how we do that. So, the next process we have here is what? We have gain. So, I want to increase the loudness, all right? I can either increase it or decrease it. Let me increase it some more. Let's see what happens here. I didn't make it normalized, but I may go past normalized, right? Let's press do it. Oh, look at that. Look how big that file looks right there. That looks crazy. Let's play that back. Oh, it's like being in the studio, man. It's like really loud, chunky. Now, that's great for rock and roll. Love that. <laughs> that's hot right there. And so let's process this. Let's undo it. That's really cool. And next we have here... We have copy. Of course, you always want to copy a sample, right? So this is simple, and you know what it's going to be. I would just come and copy a sample, and it gives me a brand new name of that sample. I would copy it. I have one and two at that point. In this case, this is really not one, but this is two, and the first one is just the regular name. I'm not going to do that, because that's pretty simple to do. You can do that at home. Watch it. Don't do it around your kids. And the next thing I'm going to do here is we can change the reduce the bit depth of the sample. Now you can practice at home with this. This is kind of cool, but I won't do this here. I'm going to do something you can do at home. Also, we can turn it from stereo to mono. It's very easy to do. You can be left side or right side. Now, a thing why I like this is because some old records you'll get, and the right side's good, and the left side's not what you want, or the bass line's on the left, and the drums are on the right. It's, you know, back in those days, they didn't have like multi-tracks. They had a few tracks, but they had to just separate sounds. But this is a great way to get those sounds off of those records. And the next one we have here, that's the last one. Well, amazing. I love that. That's kind of cool. So that's it. Cancel. Now that's what we do when we're doing sample editing in our MPC Key 61.